in good society. Okay. So, so you have already uh, seen how you can uh, design finite state machines. So, uh, now the next aspect is uh, uh, how we can minimize those machines. Now, before we uh, go into that, let us just consider a few other aspects. Uh, what is that? Okay. So, so you have already. Uh, one second. There are certain things that I have to do; otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah, so, so uh, let me let me pose a simple question to you. You have already, uh, I think you have already studied the course on automata theory. So, there you have studied finite automata, right? You have studied We have studied finite automata. And over here, what you are studying are finite state transducers. Are you okay with that, first of all? Do you appreciate that? What you have, what you have studied here so far are really finite state transducers. And what you have studied so far are finite automata. Uh, I mean, not so, so far means in your other course on, uh, what is that course? Uh, flat, 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 yeah, flat. In flat, you have studied finite automata. So, are they the are they you know computationally the same or are they different? Can you can you can someone try to answer? Are finite automata computationally equivalent to finite state transducers? Or are they different? Can you can you just try to yeah, can you think and tell me? Someone. Yeah. Yeah, come on, just try. I mean, there is nothing wrong in trying. Why don't you just try? Just try to answer. Right or wrong, that's not so important. Just try to answer. Someone, Ritoman, <coughs> you are. I think. Would you Would you like to try? Are these two computationally the same, or are they Are they different? Yeah. Who Who will try to answer? Just try to. Answer. I think I same. Think. Okay, so if they are same. Uh, so, so in that case, a finite. There should be a conversion. Okay. So, so a finite automata, a finite automaton is defined by what? You don't have any output alphabet in a finite automaton, do you? In a finite state transducer, you saw that you have an output alphabet. Right. right? So, like in a, a Moore machine, 
is all like the states have the state name and the output. Yeah, so but that can be combined to think as a state. No, no, you still you still have an output alphabet. You still have an output alphabet. Moore machine or Neely machine, you still have an output alphabet. So what? Well, Uh, whereas a finite automaton, the definition at least doesn't have any output alphabet. So what do you do about the output alphabet? So if you just, you can just try to draw a diagram. So, so I mean, if you just draw a diagram, uh, let us just see. I mean, your Finite automated looks something like this. You have an initial state, and then you have, you know, transitions on uh, x, some transition on y. Yeah, there is a lot of noise. Yeah. yeah. And then you might have some looping and all that. So, is it? And you have a final state. So this is what a finite automaton looks like. All right. And what does the FSM look look like? You still have an initial state, but your transitions are a little different, right? So you have x, a, and you have. Y, B, maybe maybe something like let's see so, something like that. So this is your finite state transducer. Uh, so are you okay with this? I mean, I've just drawn some representative diagrams. So so are you okay with this? This is what yes. is yeah. So. So, so now what you can see is that, you know, this, or maybe I can just use a different pen. So, so you know, this, these can be your, you know, you can consider these to be your, you know, symbols. So, so you can actually absorb your, uh, uh, the, this input-output combinations into your you know gamma dash so you can construct it so so now you don't have the, you, you don't have any problem with the output alphabet anymore you are able to absorb you know the uh, uh, input output symbol pairs into a new input alphabet initial you still have you know this initial state so that's not a problem. But you might have noticed that in a finite state transducer, you do not have any final, you, you don't have a final state, do you? Do you have a final state in your finite state transducer? You may not have, right? No, but, not really. Yeah, but, but you can designate. So actually, how do you designate? So that designation, so usually that input, that output, you know, the output that you have, that usually indicates. So, for example, uh, you know, some some of these outputs might, you know, indicate some intermediate output, and some and some of these outputs might indicate a, 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 an acceptance. You can say that means you have got the right kind of input. So so that way you can, you know, so where you have the right kind of output, you could. Or maybe I could just so you could you could you know designate some of those states as as final states. That means some of these states could designate uh, could indicate that you have received the right kind of input. So what you can see is that you know you can make some small transformations on a finite state transducer so that it actually you know looks like a finite automaton. So th those are computationally equivalent. You might have to do some state splitting and all that. Uh, all right. So, so I hope this is uh, clear to you.
So finite state transducers and finite automata are computationally equivalent. Okay. So now let us go over to another question. So these are finite automata, right? So finite automata means fixed, I mean finite automata or if I, if I just write finite automata. Finite automata means a fixed number of states, okay? So you have a fixed number of states. Let us call that P. So, I mean, so some, because it is, it is finite, your, your, uh, your, your uh, set of states is finite. So you have a certain number of states, P, all right. Now, let me ask you one question. You have designed a serial adder. Haven't you designed a serial adder? Yes? You have, you, have, you have already done that assignment in the lab, in fact. You have designed a serial adder, right? So, my question is, so, so this serial adder, serial adder can add two numbers of any length, right? So serial adder, serial adder can add two numbers of any number of bits or, or of any length, let us say, any length. Is that okay? Are you okay with this claim? Yeah, please answer. Are yes, you okay? Sir. Yeah, you're okay with this. So all, all of you, I mean, you can, all right. Now the next question is, So this is the question that I am posing to you. How will you, what will be your answer to this? Yes, again, just see, what, I mean, just tell me something. How will you, what will be your answer to this? Can, can you design a serial multiplier to multiply two numbers of any length? Yeah. What do you, what is, what is your, what is your feeling or what can you say about that? Hmm? Someone can volunteer to answer. Who will answer? Hmm? 
can you can you reason about it yeah someone try to answer say something then i literally have to tell call out someone Shivam Singh, would you like to answer, Shivam? Yeah, Shivam, would you like to try? Shivam, are you there? Um, hello. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell me, would you like to? Would you like to? Um, yes, uh, sir, I want to ask that if you are mentioning that of any length, so if we are yeah. using this circuit for any length. Yeah, just, just reduce your, uh, oh, oh, okay, uh, I mean, your, uh, okay, okay, you, uh, you carry on, no problem. Yeah, just, just yeah, carry on. Okay. Yeah, uh, I guess we can create a multiplier, like, if we have, if we know a particular length, like for a length 2, we can design a multiplier for that length 2, but uh -huh. if we know. No, for any length, for example, a serial adder, you know, you have already done the experiment in the lab. Yes. Using, using that serial adder, you can add two numbers of any length. All right. 10 digits, 15 digits, 50 digits, 100 digits, uh, I mean, sorry, bits. You can, you can actually add. My question is, can you design a multiplier which can... Uh, 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 yeah. But the thing is, like, uh, if I remember correctly, like, if we are adding a 10 digit and uh, if I, we are adding a 20 bit number, so uh, if I remember correctly, the circuits required to add them were different types. See, you have to see. Yeah. We, can add, we can multiply, but. Wait, wait, let's uh, wait, let's let me tell you something. See, when you say that you can do something, that is in a way relatively easy because you can present a design and say that, okay, see, this is a design and this is, uh, you know, this is uh, doing it. Now, so of course, if you think you can design, you can definitely. Uh, uh, you know, present a design that works. But if you think that it can't, if you think that it can't, you know, the work cannot be done, you cannot give an example of some circuit which fails to do it and say that it can't be done. Because, you know, you, there is always a possibility that you can design a better circuit which can, right? So, so that is not the way to answer because uh, I, I mean you are you should be aware of that at this stage. It is more difficult to answer you know uh, these negative claims. Positive claims are relatively easier to answer because you present a solution and you say that okay this is a solution it does it. So, so that is relatively easy. But suppose something cannot be done, so you cannot give an example of. Uh, of something that cannot do it and say that it cannot be done because you know it is always possible that you might be able to you know find a solution that actually works so you have to have different kind of arguments uh, if you if you want to say that something cannot be done you know those are actually a little more but but what i'm saying is that you have already studied this that's why i'm asking this question to you you have already learned how to give these arguments. For uh, I, I mean, you have already uh, you should be in a position to answer this question. That's why I'm asking this question. So, would someone like to try again? So, I'm just uh, so yeah. Would anyone like to try again? Yeah, I think you're a bit off the mark. Uh, yeah. So, would someone would someone like to try again? Yeah. Or should I call out someone's name? Okay, so I can see the picture of Satrik Bansal. So Satrik, would you like to try? 
Uh, yes, sir. I was the one who tried earlier. Yeah, I just wanted to make one more point. Yeah. Like we um maybe what we can do is just create a shift and add multiply like. First of all, tell me whether uh, yeah, Satya got it there. Yeah. So first of uh, all, someone is removing us. No, 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 someone is removing us. Please don't remove. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't remove. Uh, okay, Satya. So, uh, CRM, uh, can you just do one minute? I, uh, your slide will be off for a little bit. I am no, uh, making you no. the sole presenter. No, no problem, no problem. Uh, I think they will be able to hear me, right? So they will be able to hear you. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So so uh, I hope Satya is back. Anyway, first of yes. all, first of all, let me ask you: Do you think it can be done, or you, it cannot be done? First, answer that question. It can be done. It can be done. It can be done. All right. Okay. So I think there you are wrong. It cannot be done. First of all, so it cannot be done. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, now now you try to answer. So because uh, 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 yeah, it cannot be done. Uh, now now you try to answer why it cannot be done. See. One very intuitive, you know, reason is that, see, when you add two numbers, what is the size of the result? The size of the result can increase by only a fixed number of bits. It basically, it, it can increase by one bit, isn't it? So, so, uh, so, so if you if you think of, you know, dealing with a finite automaton, then it's it's relatively easy to handle that. But when you multiply two numbers, let us say two numbers of p bits, then what is the size of the result? The size of the result is almost double, right? It's almost two p bits. So using a finite automaton, it is difficult to keep track of so many bits because you're not you're not having to keep track of a fixed number of extra bits or anything. You are having to keep track of a number of bits that is proportional to the input. So if your input is you know, of n bits, you know, if you are multiplying two numbers of n bits, then your output is almost two n bits. So, so, so now can you can you try to answer? So actually. Uh, I, I mean, you, you studied this some time back. Do you still remember anything about the pumping lemma? Yeah. Um. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if you remember about the pumping lemma, you should actually be able to use the pumping lemma to prove that this cannot be done. So, uh, so can you try to do it? I mean, you can do it, or anyone else can also do it. That is fine. So, so, so can you use the pumping lemma? So, so you can, you know, take a very simple case of multiplying two numbers. You know, you don't have to take a difficult case. You take a simple case of multiplying two numbers and apply the pumping lemma and show that it cannot be done. It's as simple as that. So can, can you try? Because this is very important. I mean, you know, th there are concepts which actually span across the subject. So it is not that you, uh, this pumping lemma is only applicable to flat. It is also applicable to, you know, your logic design. So, yeah, so can you try? Uh, you or anyone else for that matter? Yeah? Can you try? Just, just try and you know. Are you trying? So first of all, you tell me which two numbers would you like to take as an example? I think that is a good starting point. Which two numbers will you try to take as an example? 
assuming that let us say that you your machine you know uh, your pumping length is say p i mean that kind of boils down to saying that your machine has p distinct states okay so so which two numbers do you think you should multiply it should take uh, consider for multiplication yeah can anyone suggest shantan would you like to suggest shantan shaha are you there hello aryan aryan singh sir i think all one in the see you ha huh, sorry come again one all the p bits should be one i think no I, you you can take that i mean but i'm uh, i'm just saying that uh, I, You, see you should you should it is good to you know take the simplest uh simplest input which will serve your purpose if you take all p bits as one you could do that but that may be a little more difficult so can you think of a simpler number 1 followed by p minus 1 0 No, no. Your input. See, you take. Let us say you take two to the power p. That is, you know, two to the power p. So, so now, if you multiply, you know, uh, two to the power p by two to the power p, what will be the result? Two to the power two p. Two to the power two p. so so what does 2 to the power p look like it is one followed by how many zeros p zeros one followed by p zeros uh oh, okay so yeah so now now if you try to handle that using your your so assume that your machine has p states so how will your how will your uh, you know say so if you try to design a finite state transducer you know with uh, 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 so, so your finite state transducer has to go through how many states and then produce a one so it has to remember right you have got you have got uh you know uh, you got to remember that you got to output uh, so many zeros all right you got to output so many zeros and then uh produce a one so now you apply the pumping lemma and see whether you have got enough states to remember that you got to you know to remember the number of zeros that you got to output so so can you can you use that line of reasoning to you know uh, say that uh, this really cannot be done using a machine of p states can you do that yeah can you do that are you able to do it see i think this you should have been able to do after you know see you have you have to output a lot of zeros but now 
your machine has only p states okay so you know you output a zero so basically you know you 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 are outputting a zero you are making a transition and you are outputting a zero but because your machine has only p states say 1 2 so at some point at some point you are going to loop back right you are going to come back to an intermediate state you are going to loop back and the moment you loop back you can't remember how uh, so, so, so the moment you you enter a cycle you know you you, you can't you can't keep track of you know how many times you have looped you have no no way to uh, 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 you know keep track of how many times you are looping so so the point is that you just don't have enough states to remember that you have uh, uh, you know to remember how many zeros you have output so so you cannot Hello. Okay. Okay. So, so, so that is the argument. You just don't have enough states to to remember uh, 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 how to how to output the required number of zeros correctly. So that's why uh, you cannot uh, you cannot design a serial multiplier. Uh, a, a finite state serial multiplier which can multiply any two number uh, or two numbers of any length all right so that is uh, you know a basic limitation of finite state machine or for that matter a finite automata so anyway so so this is uh, this is uh, an important aspect which you should Uh, remember, not that uh, you know, uh, not that uh, you know what we just saw some time back, because these two are you know computationally equivalent. These two are computationally equivalent. So you could very well you know get into situations where you need to employ the principles of uh, the, the the you know automata theory uh, theoretic principles in you know your For, uh, for 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 the design of your finite state transducers in fact uh, we 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 will need those concepts again now so uh, so let us uh, look at the issue of minimizing the number of states of a finite state transducer so now we'll make a distinction between a fully specified machine and an incompletely specified machine okay so so a fully specified machine looks like this one the one that you have here why is it fully specified because for each state for each input first of all the transition is defined and also the output is defined okay so here you can see that if you are in state a i mean uh, you can just try to sketch the corresponding machine so here you have how many states you got six states right so let us just try to sketch the machine I've just drawn six states, so let us call the states A, C, so now from A on input zero you go to E, so uh, on input zero you go to E. and you also output zero and on input one you go to d and you output one
Now from B on input 0, you go to F. So B on input 0, you go to F and you output a 1. And on input 1, you go to D and you output. So let us say you go to D and you output a 0. From C on input 0, you go to E. So from C on input 0, you go to E and you output a 0. And on input 1, you go to B and you output a 1. Uh, then D, on input 0, you go to F. On input 0, you go to F. And you output, output a 0. And on input 1, you go to B. Sorry, what did I do? I think I made a mistake. Yeah, from D on input 0, sorry, on D on input 0, you go to F, output is 0, and on input 1, you go to B. And you output a 0. All right. And C, so, so this is, uh, I'm just completing it. Uh, from state E on input 0, you go to A. So, uh, this is, sorry, what did I do? E uh, on input 0, I go to C, sorry. On input 0, I go to C. And uh, maybe I should write it somewhere else. And uh, I output a 0. Input 1, I go to F. And I output a 1. And finally, from F, I go to B on input 0. I am output 0 and on 1 I go to C. Alright. On 1 I go to C and I output a 0. Alright. So this is my machine. Alright. This is my machine. And it is fully specified. Why is it fully specified? As you can see, for each for for each input, the next state is defined. For each input, the next state is defined, and the output is also defined. So this machine is fully specified. Alright. So Sometimes we'll see that machines need not be fully specified. We'll see that later. So when, so, so let us consider some basic notions of uh, state equivalence. So two states, SI and SJ of M are distinguishable. If and only if a finite input sequence applied to M produces distinct output sequences depending on whether M is an SI or SJ. All right. So basically, you have, you know, you have a machine in which you have got two states, SI and SJ. Now, how will you try to how will you try to you know check that these two can you distinguish between these two states? 
So how can you try to distinguish between these two states? You can provide some input x, get a sum x. I mean, so if you get two distinct inputs, then you can definitely say that, okay, on input x, I've got a here, I've got b here. So you could say that those are, you know, different states. But if you have the same input here, if you have the same output, so immediately you can't say. But if they make a transition to, you know, some other state, let us say y, and you see. So now you can see that, you know, you, you are able to distinguish. You are able to distinguish. This is C, this is T. So now you are able to distinguish. Of course, in this case, you are able to distinguish in the very next step. But it, it, it need not happen so fast. It can, it can you know, it, 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 even this one might be the same, you know. Even this one might be the same. So, even this one might be the same. So at some point, at some point, you know, if you, uh, you, know, you can have many, many transitions, and if at some point you have this distinction, uh, so if, if at some point you have, you know, say Z, you have, you, you have, say, I mean, if you, if you have two, two distinct outputs, say E and on the Z, you have F. So then you can still distinguish. So 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 long as you have a finite, uh, you know, uh, sequence of inputs. These are your inputs. So long as you have a finite sequence of inputs, uh, which uh, lead to a you know different uh, output sequence. So different means, uh, of course, you you are interested in the first. Uh, you know, place where it differs because that is enough. Okay. Uh, so, so, so long as they produce, you can find uh, uh, two two sequences which lead to you know different output for the same input. Then you can say that these two uh, states are distinguishable. So that is what is being said here. The SI and SG of M are distinguishable if and only if. Uh, a finite input sequence applied to M produces distinct output sequences depending on whether M is in SI or SJ. If you cannot find any two, any two, uh, 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 or if you if you cannot find any such finite sequence which will produce different output sequences, then you have to conclude that uh, those two states are indistinguishable. Those two states need not be identical, but they could be indistinguishable. Okay, so so that is uh, 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 the point to note. So so. So that's when two states are distinguishable. And if you have two distinguishable states, then the sequence which helps to distinguish between these two states is called a distinguishing sequence. Okay. And then SI and SG are k distinguishable if there exists a sequence of length k to distinguish between SI and SJ. And similarly, you have k equivalent. If to, you cannot find a sequence of length k to distinguish between SI and SJ, and uh, and SI and SJ are equivalent if they are k equivalent for all k, all right, for all k, uh, if those are k equivalent. And again, if you you know, so so here uh, the question is. 
if your machine has n number of states, then can you put a bound on the value of k? So you, you will see that it is enough to consider sequences of length n minus 1. So if you cannot distinguish two states uh, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, suppose a machine has n states, you cannot distinguish uh, those, uh, you know, the, the, the states with uh, sequences of length up to n minus 1, then really you cannot distinguish them at all. All right. So the the underlying reason is again uh, you know, the fact that uh, you know once you once you get back uh, into a loop, then uh, uh, you you uh, I, 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 I mean you'll just keep looping. So no matter how long an import you apply, if you cannot distinguish. Uh, for k less than or equal to n minus 1, you won't be able to distinguish that. All right. So, what we, the way we can, we can, you know, uh, use that principle is that you can, so, so you have, you have, uh, So if we if we consider the example shown here, you have a machine with six states. All right. Now, so how do you how do you try to so what do you want to do? You want to so suppose suppose two states S I and S C are not distinguishable. Okay, then those two states. Are equivalent, right? Those two states are equivalent. So essentially, what you want to do is you want to partition the states of the fully specified finite state machine into into equivalent classes, into into equivalence classes, so that all the states in the same equivalence class are indistinguishable. Okay. That is what you want to do. You want to partition the states of this uh, fully specified finite state machine into equivalence classes. So what you do is you, to start with, you assume that all the states are equivalent. You assume that all the states are equivalent and then you see whether you know your claim is true or not. So let us see what you are doing here. I think we we are all uh, we have actually you know we are at the end of the class, so I'll stop now. But I'll just show you the first step. So here you know we have made uh, we have we have assumed that you know A B C D E F are are equivalent. That is our initial claim. Okay, but is our claim true? So let us see. Now you can see that uh, you know if you if you look at uh, if 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 you, if you look at this uh, if you, if you look at this row. Uh, suppose, so if you apply the input 0, if you apply the input 0 from A, you go to state E, giving an output of 0, and, let, uh, okay, so, sorry, for input 0, actually, you cannot make any distinction, right? Because if you give the input 0, no matter in which state you are, the output is always zero. But if you give the input one, you find that if you give the input one, you find that if you are in state A, 
you get an output 1. If you are in state C, you get an output 1. If you are in state E, you get an output 1. On the other hand, if you are in state B, you get an output 0. If you are in state D, you get an output 0. And if you are in state F, you get an output 0. So what is clear is that on input 1, you, you, you can distinguish between two sets of states, all right? You can distinguish between two sets of states. That is, uh, so if you take A, C, and E, okay? A, C, and E. And then you can distinguish between B, D, and F, okay? You can distinguish between B, D, and F. Why? Because on input 0, for this set of states, on input, sorry, on input 1, you get output 1. And for this set of states, on input 1, you get the output 0. So you are able to distinguish between these two uh, set of states. All right? So, so that is how it goes on. You are able. To, uh, so, so, so this. So in the. So this is actually P1. All right. So, so that way you can you can uh, continue to uh, continue to uh, you know uh, uh, reduce this partition. So we'll continue with this in the next class. All right. Okay. So we'll stop here now. Thank you.